delighted of having today the guests that were awarded with the Bologna Ragazzi Award for the special category uh, poetry of this uh, 2021. And I give my warmest welcome to the authors, so Juan Palomino and Adolfo Cordova, who was a curator in this case, and to our friends of Ecare Publishing House, uh, Maria Francisca Pancha Maiobre uh, and Anna Carolina Palmero. I'm delighted of having you here. It's not formal, it's true, because of many different reasons. Uh, connected with the Bologna uh, Children's Book Fair World and our International Common World of Children's Book. Um, I would like to present our guests before getting into a conversation and we planned also a beautiful reading. So we will enjoy the book and go through its pages. So uh, as a start, I would like to read the motivation that the jury gave. So it was a special jury for a special category. And I have to say that books that were candidated for this category really brought great surprises. So they were amount, uh, about uh, 200 books. So it was a great job to do and the jury had the no doubts at all and wanted to motivate the award to the beautiful Cajita de Phosphorus Ediciones Ecare with these words. Uh, Cajita de Phosphorus inside a tiny matchbox is an anthology of great quality full of astonishing Ibero-American Ibero free verse poetry. Adolfo Cordova conducted extensive research for this book which resulted in an immaculate selection of poems that children are likely to understand and enjoy, despite some of them not specially written for the young and partly achieved by careful placement in the best possible order. Juan Palomino's stunning artwork both complements and enhances the verse, while his colorful dramatic illustrations still leave space for the young reader's imagination. This beautiful design book features some of the greatest writers from Argentina, Mexico, and Chile, such as Borges, Fuentes, and Mistral, as well as less known poets of the past and presented from many different countries. Cordova's own feeling for poetry and understanding of young readers is quite inspirational. Combined with Palomino's sensitive and beautiful interpretation of the text made this book an outstanding winner. So congratulations as a first thing. We, <laughs> we are amazed from your work. And I, as a first thing, I was to receive the news of the award. How did you, how did you get it? <laughs> I asked to Adolfo Cordova, you are a creator. There is a huge work behind it. So sure. I received the award. Uh, thank you, Marcella. We are really, really excited to be here. We feel really, really grateful. And we received an email from Irene Sabino, the art director in Ecare, Spain, telling us the great news. We, I was waking up, it was early in Mexico, and it was like a really, really beautiful way to begin the day. I was surprised and amazed. And yes, that was it. So I take, thank you, uh, Adolfo. I take the chance to say, it. so um, Adolfo is based in Mexico City, am I right? Yes. And Juan also, right? You're both Mexican, while the wonderful Ecker Republic Publishing House is based in Caracas, Venezuela. And I want to spend a few words to present our guests and you. Um, and as I said, there are many different connections that already came in the past among uh, Bologna Children's Book Fair and Ediciones Ecare. Ediciones Ecare was also awarded as the best publisher of the year in 2016 for uh, Central and South America. And I also remember that. And uh, from 1978 is doing a great, great job. We link the idea of your work um, with Banco del Libro, which is a great institution in um, Central and, and South America and uh, based in, in Venezuela. So, um, uh, Ediciones Ecare, we already uh, met and you were 
awarded with many different awards in different years. And uh, to present Adolfo Cordova, I prepared a paper because there is so much to say. So you are a journalist, <laughs> a writer, you're a scholar, you're a researcher, and you're doing an incredible work in years so with a master in books and literature for children uh, and young adults from Universitat Autonoma de Barcelona, visiting professor in several cities and universities among the world and I, I I want to say that I was reading the 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 list and maybe it's the first time you're lecturing in a way in Italy so we expect yes. we wait for you at the university I work at the University of Bologna I didn't present myself but here I'm in charge for Bologna Children's Book Fair of this beautiful meeting but we look forward having you in uh, in Italy Adolfo um, I, I want to mention also your beautiful uh, blog that is Linterna si Bosques where you uh, write and you also have guests writing about uh, children's literature and especially poetry and also I would like to nominate your last book which is Renovar e l'assombro un panorama della poesia infantile juvenile contemporanea in espanol and uh, so a landscape of children's literature and poetry um, and it was published in uh, 2019 I'm really honored and I have to say that uh, even your work as a curator of this anthology of Ibero-American Iber authors has been uh, um, as set in different places. You were in Munich, <laughs> in the Castle of Books, as you call it, and yes. um, so it's a big, uh, it's a big uh, work, and it's an achievement after years of devoting your work to to the poetry. So um, uh, I would like also to uh, present Juan Palomino that uh, we remember in Bologna again because in 2016 he was awarded among the selected illustrators of the illustrations exhibition in Bologna. It was a word he was awarded with uh, an award that we care a lot about. It's a friendship that we have, Bologna Children's Book Fair with Fondation SM and the um, illustration, the International Illustration Award um, really changes the life of the illustrator that uh, receives it. So afterward, I will ask you to tell us about uh, this. Um, Juan Palomino is a very prolific author and illustrator. And here, uh, add the job to uh, add il illustrations that are texts in some way to this poet, to this poetry, to these poems. And um, uh, something about the selection of, of this anthology. Uh, we have 100 years of poetry. Uh, how could you choose? How did you choose? And uh, what are your feelings about uh, poetry that drive your, your work, Adolfo? Sure, Mar Mar Marcella. Well, let me, it's, a, it's a, a, an important question. Let me just say that I started this book like I start all my books with a question. It was a question uh, that was triggered by my fascination. Uh, uh, back in 2016, while I was working in an, an overview of poetry published in Latin America and Spain between 2013 and 2016 for a presentation in Mexico, I read almost 200 books. And in most of them, I felt uh, the same rhyme poetry forms were wary out. Uh, but in a smaller portion, I was surprised by uh, the experimentation, the many fields of creation of non-rhyme poetry, free verse, uh, prose poetry. I felt like the, the, these were forms uh, that take, take, in, take into account singularities and the many and diverse ways to think and try to represent children's worlds. So in, in 2017, with the support of two research fellowships, you already said that I was a little bit around the world looking for poems. It's uh, the work of my dreams, actually. Uh, I was in Munich with the support of the International uh, Youth Library, and then in Spain with the support of Pedro Cerrillo in CEPLI. 
And I began working on this anthology there. But the 100 years didn't come out until we were already uh, talking with Pancha in the edition process. I was not originally thinking it will have a, an historical perspective. I just wanted to do an anthology with all these different ways of doing poetry uh, that are separated from the classical forms. But it was actually Achilles Nasoa, a, a Venezuelan poet, who gave me the key. I decided to. I, I decided the book was going to be. It was going to be like this overview of 100. Well, historical overview. I didn't know it was going to be 100 years. When I read his poem, eh, "Método práctico para aprender a leer en siete lecciones musicales con acompañamientos de gotas de lluvia," <laughs> something like practic practical method to learn to read in seven eh, musical lessons with accompaniments of raindrops, that from its very title, it proposed a revolution. He was stepping from classical educational reading, which poetry is uh, normally associated to, uh, the, this to learn how to read that Achilles Nasoa said. He was stepping from that to a modern child, children's literature uh, that subverts the traditional form uh, through game, through exp experimentation. So in that point, I said, this poem was from 1943. And at that point I said, okay, I have to, I have to start like really focusing who were the first poets that dare to break the traditional children's poetry, who was actually imagining childhoods uh, in the periphery, who was actually being, uh, not doing what was expected. And what's, what is really interesting is like the oldest poems in the anthology from Gabriela Mistral, from Juana de Barburu, uh, from Achilles Nasoa. Th they didn't publish these poems I selected uh, thinking in children. They, it was difficult to do so because the ones that I uh, selected are non-rhyme, are actually uh, prose poems, but they are, of course, in the canon of children's literature, Gabriela Mistral, Juan Ibarburu, Aquiles Nasoa, but these particular ones were not in, in yes, it's, uh, it's a thought for children. So uh, I will stop here because, as, as you can see, it's something that really fascinated me, but I, I think with this you can have like a little overview of what was I thinking when I started this anthology? Thank you. I want to underline what you said because you said they dare to publish, and then they say uh, they were they were doing someone was doing the unexpected. And in a way, I think that in children's publishing, as in other area of cultures, the courage is very important to go to the margins, as you said. And when we talk about poetry for children, we are moving ourselves on the margin, on the borders, because as a first thing, we think to rhyme. And you said it, and this anthology has the great merit of proposing um, poems that are in free verse or in prose. So the musicality of, uh, of these poems, it's something that goes through the lines, through the verses, and go directly to the, the reader. Uh, trusting the reader. So when we talk about the courage and also the trust to the reader, we talk about um, editorial and a publishing project in the whole of its uh, complexity. So I would like to ask to uh, Maria Francisca Pancha Maiobre um, of uh, Edizione Secare about the process of this book, but then we will go back through the pages, Adolfo and Juan, <laughs> and with uh, Anna uh, also, because we want to we wanna see more. But as a first thing, how does it come that a publisher is so brave that publishes not, not only poems for books for children, but poems with no rhymes? <laughs> Thank you, Marcela. Um, well, uh, Edición de Secare, um, since 1978, when it started, I think has had, um, before I was even working in the publisher house, 
uh, lots of courage and bravery, like to start publishing books in Latin America for children, especially aiming for high quality books that weren't really published in Latin America at that time. And mostly the books came from Spain with um, uh, Spanish, the way uh, people speak in Spain, um, a peninsular Spanish. So like um, children in Latin America, when they uh, read these books and when they saw these books with drawings from Spain, with snow, with different um, wildlife, um, very white children, a different language, they were, uh, they re rejected the books. So Ecare at that time, they decided with lots of courage and with Banco del Libro on their side, like to start publishing books that were really Latin American with um, people that looked like uh, the diversity of Latin America, the diversity of the uh, Spanish, the way it's spoken from Chile to Central America. So I think it's in the core of the publishing house of Ecare to be brave. And especially in this book, I remember the day Adolfo sent us an email um, asking for some information about Aquiles Nassau, which is a very dear writer for the publishing house. We have um, three other beautiful books that have been published uh, uh, since 1980. They are like every, every we have a reprint um, almost like every two years. And so Adolfo was like asking things about this Aquiles Nassoa. We didn't know, no, nobody in the publishing house knew. And I was like, oh, here's a book. Here's an, a great idea. Here's a great research that nobody has ever done before. And so that day we started talking with Adolfo about our love of poetry, of poems and how we can make a book. And Adolfo is, a very thorough and he had hundreds of poems. So in his research, so we had to like downsize the anthology and it was a lot of fun, great work. And at that time in Venezuela, we had shortage of electricity, shortage of food, shortage of everything. But being able to have this poetry book and working with poems, I think all the team in Ecare was like, so overwhelmed and happy and it like the book is about matches and about light and about fire and I think even if we didn't have light at that time in Venezuela this book like for the whole team um, was like was enlightening for all and then we decided with Ana Palmero that's the way Necare works as a team always like an editor, an illustrator, an author or a curator and an art director that we didn't want this book like to be like um, a poetry book or an anthology where the poems were illustrated with vignettes or with illustrations that um, were very decorative. We wanted to aim for a picture book that made another narrative with the poems. And we looked at many illustrators and we always loved the work of Juan Palomino. And so um, we talked to Juan and Juan has a very wild mind and a very creative way of connecting with poetry and philosophy. And then we took all the risks together and the publishing house also like is not aiming always like for selling books, but just, you know, having fun in making them and uh, making like, a, a, how would I say, like a mark with, with its books that they can be unique. So I think that's a little bit of the story. It's a very beautiful story. And there's also this element of the light that uh, recurs in the, in the book. And it also gives uh, the title to the book. It's a very beautiful poem. And maybe it's the moment that we should read it. What do you think? And uh, we could go inside the book. And uh, it's very moving what you, what you said about that moment in Venezuela being enlightened and delighted from the project of the book. And I think the power of, uh, of books is, is this one that keeps us alive and, and, and light and, 
and burning in a way. So I am going through the pages and uh, uh, here there's uh, the index and there is also beautiful uh, post page, one page by Adolfo Cordova, and we start to see also the images of the Juan Palomino. You said it very well. It is a perfect picture book. It's not, it doesn't look like anything else. It means that there is a perfect balance among uh, between images and words. And I think that the, the work of uh, Juan Palomino has been uh, really incredible in adding one voice and also going with the other voices and we will go back to it. But uh, first, if you like it, I would love to hear um, the poem by Maria Elena Walsh that gives the title to the book. Uh, read aloud, you prepared the one Spanish and English version. So uh, we listen to you. Thank you, Marcela en una cajita de fósforos. En una cajita de fósforos se pueden guardar muchas cosas. Un rayo de sol, por ejemplo, pero hay que encerrarlo muy rápido, si no, se lo come la sombra. Un poco de copo de nieve, quizá una moneda de luna, botones del traje del viento y mucho, muchísimo más. Les voy a contar un secreto. En una cajita de fósforos yo tengo guardado una lágrima, y nadie, por suerte, la ve. Es claro que ya no me sirve. Es cierto que está muy gastada. Lo sé, pero ¿qué voy a hacer? Tirarla me da mucha lástima. Tal vez las personas mayores no entiendan jamás de tesoros. Basura, dirán. Cachivaches. No sé por qué juntan todo esto. No importa. Que ustedes y yo igual seguiremos guardando palitos, pelusas, botones tachuelas virutas de lápiz, carosos tapitas papeles, piolín, carreteles, trapitos, hilachas, cascotes y bichos. En una cajita de fósforos se pueden guardar muchas cosas. Las cosas no tienen mamá. Marilena Walsh. Thank you. Eh, María Francisca Pancha, are you reading it for, for us in English? Yes, it, this Thank is you. a rough translation made by Araya Goitia and the team of ECARE for work purpose, so it's not perfect, but I think we can get the idea in, sure. to read it a little bit in English. Mm -hmm. And so it says, the title, Inside a Tiny Matchbox. Inside a tiny matchbox, many things can be kept. A ray of sun, for instance, but it needs to be cut quickly, if not, It'll be eaten by shade. A bit of snowflake, perhaps a coin of moon, buttons for the wind suit, and more, so much more. I'm going to tell you a secret. Inside a tiny matchbox, I have kept a teardrop, and no one, fortunately, sees it. For sure, it's no longer useful. It's true that it's worn out. I know, but I'm. Um, I do do, what a pity it would be to throw it away. Maybe grown up people won't understand about treasures. Garbage, they'll say, junk. I don't know what they keep all of this. Doesn't matter, you and I will keep on storing sticks, fluffs, buttons, thumbtacks, pencil shavings, foot pits, lids, papers, strings, reels, small rags, threads, rumble, and bugs. Inside a tiny matchbox, many things can be kept. Things don't have a mom. Thank you. Thank you very much for reading it. I have Marcella, to say, sorry, Marcella, I, just, I just want to underline that please. these just want to underline that this poem was published in 1965. And of course, Marilena Walsh was a very well-known poet, rhyme poet and songwriter. But, you know, like to publish this in 1965 was really advanced because there is no rhyme. There is this perspective of the kid that is talking to the adult. And 
in a way is um, standing up against uh, adultos adultocentrism. So it just I just wanted to underline that because every time I hear this poem, even if it's in Spanish or English, it just reminds me how revolutionary Marilena Walsh was and this particularly uh, poem, particular poem. Yes, it really sounds like very modern today and it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's a lot of time ago. So it's important to see in which context the words and, were. And Pancha suggested this should be the title of the anthology. And I guess it was because of what we are saying. And it was a really... I have wise. to say that reading through the pages, my Spanish is not that good, but I can still enjoy while I'm reading and reading uh, reading the poems, uh, there were images of light and of lightness also, like balloons. And um, these two elements, for me, I saw it many times coming. And so uh, the title, I guess, it's, uh, it's, it's containing these images of a secret, of a box, of a treasure, but also of the light, of a power, a fire. It's, it's very powerful. And um, I wanted also to underline that uh, there are many, many names. You just mentioned some, but we also have, for example, classical uh, great poems uh, or writers like Jorge Luis Borges, but also um, uh, poems that we know for children's literature, for example, Jorge Lujan. And I also would like to remember that the last poem, which I really like, uh, which is uh, El Espantamiedo, uh, by Maria Jose Ferrada uh, was very appreciated and she is one very interesting voice and I like to mention that in the special mentions of the award there is a book uh, written by her uh, Los Niños uh, which is very moving and devoted to children in, in, in Chile uh, disappeared in Chile. So it's like um, a journey in Central and South American culture, I would say. And uh, if you like, we can go and see some more pages. And uh, I, so our um, audience can also enjoy uh, the beauty, the lightness, and the uh, uh, form of maybe some cons conceptual art and by Juan Palomino and also uh, the work of the um, uh, Anna, the, the, the art director. And I would like to ask you, um, uh, Juan Palomino, uh, how was uh, illustrating this anthology for you? Okay, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to speak in Spanish because uh, Spanish is uh, difficult to me, <laughs> so English is more... <laughs> um, we have well. a translation <laughs> of uh, Gabriela Verdi that I thank, so just go on and we'll, we'll listen to you with pleasure in your language, beautiful okay. language. Um, creo que la primera señal de lo que iba a hacer este libro, um, para mí y, y como libro también, fue que la primera vez que nos vimos eh, para hablar de él eh, se convirtió en una fiesta <ríe> y acabamos tomando mezcales. Eh, era originalmente una junta de trabajo eh, que derivó en otra cosa y creo que eso es una forma de hablar de la diferencia que hace en un libro que realmente haya un trabajo de equipo en el que, en el que cada persona eh, sabe y asume su carácter creativo. Do we want to, to hear from Gabriela in English? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, your microphone, Gabriela. Gabriela. Um, can you hear me? 
Uh, oh, yeah. the, yes, I remember the first sign I got that the book was going to be something special was the first time that we met to talk about the book. And a work meeting uh, turned into a party. And in fact, we were together to, to talk about work and we ended up having mezcales and drinking and having a good time. So from work to something completely different. And we fully understand uh, the difference that it makes so when a book is based on real teamwork, where everyone can be creative and give a major contribution to the final result. Um, Sigo. Sí. <laughs> eh, en esa reunión, eh, Pancha me dijo que esperaban de este libro justo lo que eh, decía hace rato, ¿no? Eh, que la imagen fuera un elemento no secundario, eh, que le diera como coherencia y cohesión, unidad al libro, que pues obviamente tenía textos de muchas personas y de muchos momentos, y que además cada doble página eh, tuviera su propia consistencia, su propia contundencia, como si cada doble página fuera un cartel. Esto yo lo agradezco mucho porque, como decía antes, eh, que exista una, una figura editorial que realmente tiene una idea sobre eh, el libro es muy importante para todos. Yes, uh, I, I remember that during this first meeting, Pancha expressed her hopes and she said that uh, images should not play a secondary role. They should have consistency, mm -hmm. unity and cohesion and should add all of that to the book. Uh, a book that was made of different texts uh, written by different people in different times and that each double page had to have its own consistency, its own unity and uh, be in itself a reliable unit and this is a very important to have a publisher that has a clear idea about what the result of the book has to be. Eh, yo tengo una relación muy tensa con ilustrar poesía al mismo tiempo que es lo que más me atrae. Eh, me siento a veces limitado. <risa> Recuerdo que el primer libro que ilustré eh, de un poeta que se llama Fabio Morávito, un poco italiano, un poco mexicano. Eh, cuando hablamos de él me dijo, para ilustrar un poema, solo se puede ilustrar un poema con un poema. Eso para mí, al mismo tiempo que fue muy claro, eh, me dio mucha angustia, <ríe> porque entonces hay que ser poeta. <ríe> eh, Creo que este libro fue una oportunidad muy importante para mí de reflexionar y ejecutar eh, esas reflexiones sobre lo que implica ilustrar poesía, que en realidad es lo que implica ilustrar. Yes, I have a very tense relationship with illustrating poetry. I feel attracted at the same time to that, but limited also. And I remember the first book I illustrated, it was by Fabio Morabito. He is an Italian-Mexican author. And he told me, if you have to illustrate poetry, you need to do that with poetry. And that was very clear to me, but it gave me a lot of anxiety because in order to illustrate poetry, I needed to be a poet. And um, uh, this book has given me the opportunity to think about it and try to put that idea into practice. So illustrated a poem, a poem of poetry by trying to be a poet myself. Well, I just say one, I remember that uh, Maurice Sendak, he wrote the picture book is a poetic form poetic complex form. So we are going really in the art of doing picture book. Thank you for, 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 for mentioning this dimension of illustration as a composition of poetry. It's beautiful, but go ahead. Um, solo sobre el proceso particular de este libro, eh, 
hay una estructura en la forma en la que Adolfo eh, ordenó los poemas en la que una palabra, una idea, un, una atmósfera va saltando de uno a otro como si un fósforo encendiera al siguiente. Esto para mí, junto con lo que me había dicho Pancha, eran las bases que podían darme parámetros gráficos para la imagen. Eh, pero la, lo que determinó qué pasa en la parte visual de este libro es eh, el poema de la cajita de fósforos que me hizo tener una idea sobre cómo funciona eh, o qué es la poesía tanto en, en lo escrito o lo oral como en lo gráfico. Eh, pensaba yo en qué son estas cajitas en las que guardamos tesoros de niños y de pronto pensé, claro, es que esos objetos no son solo lo que son, sino que se abren hacia lo que nos hace recordar, lo que nos hacen sentir, como que eh, el hecho de que algo esté en una cajita de tesoros al mismo tiempo que, lo, que lleva la atención a su superficie la abre hacia afuera de sí mismos. And another important point was the structure and the shape Adolfo gave to the book in the way the different poems were placed and the order that was chosen for them. Each word, each idea, each atmosphere jumped in a way from one poem to the other uh, as if it were a... a um, a match that would ignite the next one. And this provided me the foundations for the graphic work that I needed to do to illustrate the book. And um, this actually determined the visual result uh, of the poetry that uh, was uh, underneath all that, the poetry in this little matchbox. Uh, and that gave me really uh, the clear idea that uh, Poetry is uh, what is written, what is orally transmitted, but also the graphic form that can be used to, to, to convey its meaning. And then I was thinking about these little treasure boxes that kids like so much and they put things in that. Uh, every object uh, can bring us something else. They can remind us and feel things. So it's not just what's it, it, what it is inside the box that really matters, but it's the surface and what comes outside from, from the box itself that really matters and contributes to the, creating the illustrating power. Entonces, con esas principios, pensé en una serie de formas eh, como muy básicas que representaban en términos generales, por ejemplo en esta imagen, como el, el fósforo prendido y el fósforo apagado, es decir, la forma círculo y la forma llama o hoja o ojo, que a lo largo del libro se van transformando y van dialogando de distinta forma con los poemas. Eh, tener una regla así me permitía que las imágenes tuvieran un poco su propia lógica y su propia narrativa al mismo tiempo que podían dialogar estas formas con lo que pasaba en cada poema. Eh, esto no solo es como una regla para lo que sucede en un libro o cómo se va a, a, a realizar este diálogo, sino que es una forma de responder a esto que decía Fabio, Fabio Morávito sobre ilustrar un poema con un poema, porque desde este lugar las imágenes, más que ilustrar, es decir, más que ejemplificar o aclarar o repetir, lo que hacen es resonar con los poemas. Creo que para mí este fue un aprendizaje en este libro, que la imagen no tiene que... Eh, no es una interpretación. Hay una interpretación ahí, pero es más un diálogo que en su... que si funciona, resuena con el texto.
Um, so um, this uh, was the principle that I started from in trying to develop a basic form that could really represent that idea of uh, the match that was lit and the match that was extinguished. The circle, the shape of the circle and the shape of the flame uh, that uh, from one poem to the other, they transform and uh, they establish a kind of dialogue with the different poems. So images, uh, in a way, follow their own logic, their own narrative, and establish a dialogue with the poem. And uh, this should be actually a rule to be followed in all books. I mean, there should be a dialogue between the image and the text. And uh, this has been my way of responding to uh, Fabio Morabito's idea that you need to uh, use poetry to illustrate poetry. And images uh, should not only be used to illustrate a, a concept or a book, not only it has to, they have to go beyond explaining and repeating things. Images have to resonate with the poem. And this opportunity of illustrating this book has made me learn a lot, uh, considering images not as interpretations, but as a form of dialogue. And if this dialogue works really well, then it resonates with the poem. Thank you very much, Juan. And I would like to know, because there is a um, collective work in doing uh, picture books, as you said, and it's very beautiful that this dialogue that you're talking about is not only metaphorical, is also actual, is also physical. So there is people and there are voices that convey to uh, arrive to this beautiful achievement. And so I would like to hear also from Anna Carolina Palmero, how it was to, um, to match, to combine, to give um, a visual form, a graphic form to such a project. And uh, really Juan, I, I really liked what you said and it's very synesthetical what you, what you said. So bringing together different languages and atmospheres and also light. And before giving um, the word to uh, Anna and Carolina, I, um, I apologize, I think you were not seeing the book. Did you, are you seeing it now? Uh, I don't know, uh, <laughs> see <at> the end. <laughs> Are, are you seeing, uh, Pancha, are you seeing the book now? We're only seeing one image. We saw the cover before, and now we're <clears> seeing <throat> the image of uh, yeah. the Achilles Nassoa oh, poem. But I we haven't been able to, to be seeing the different pages of the book, unfortunately. Okay. And now do you see it, right? But only the Achilles Nassoa in a PDF. Only. only that still. So I take just a second to solve this because I really want to share the beautiful book. So Anna, Anna doesn't speak English. Okay, so, so, Anna, tú hablas español. Hablo español mejor, sí. Allora Te comprendo, Gabriel. pero no, pero no. Perfecto, tenemos Gabriel aquí por esto. Eh, 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 si quieres, eh, you tell me about your work as an okay. art director of these beautiful elements and voices going together. And I try to show the book. So maybe Adolfo, you okay. tell me if I if you see it or not when 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 it does. Okay, gracias. Bueno, uno de los principales retos aquí era ver cómo poner 36 poetas eh, con te con temas diferentes, con tamaños diferentes de, de poesía. Eh, y una de las dificultades en, en un principio fue el formato. Si quieres, se hace traslado. Ok, one of the main challenges in uh, working on this book was how to put 36 different poets together, poems of different sizes and different topics. So we had to choose a format. Eh, en un principio pensamos en usar un formato cuadrado porque Caré tenía otro libro de antología de poetas, eh, un poco para más pequeño, eh, y tenía ese formato. Pero en este caso eh, lo probamos y vimos que para el ilustrador iba a haber muy poco espacio de trabajo, que lo que buscábamos era una imagen impactante en cada doble página. 
Yes, at the beginning, we thought about using a squared format because it had been used in books for smaller children. So we tried that, but then we realized it wasn't good enough, that there wasn't enough space for the illustrator to fit everything in the double page. And we wanted the double page to be really impactful. Eh, hicimos varias maquetas de solamente de texto. Llegamos a hacer casi como 12 maquetas antes de entregarle a Juan porque queríamos que eso estuviera muy cerrado de manera que fuera clara eh, su primera impresión al ver eh, la ubicación de cada doble. So we prepared a number of models. We tested uh, in different ways. 12 different tests and 12 models that we worked on before giving them on to Juan because we wanted him to have a clear idea and his first impression of the way he had to work had to be were very clear and well structured. Eh, con Ecare siempre trabajamos eh, después de que ya tenemos la maqueta de texto, el editor, el ilustrador y el director de arte y se hace un... un un triunvirato, ¿no? Entre los tres bueno. se comienza a hacer todo el proceso de storyboard en bocetos. So uh, we prepare this first uh, test model with the text and then we have a meeting with the illustrator, the art director and the author. This threesome, this group of people have to be working together and start producing the storyboard. Eh, cuando ya se aprueba ese storyboard que costó, le costó a Juan, pero bueno, que él ya tenía, teníamos eh, mucha fe en él porque conocíamos su trabajo. Eh, y bueno, fue un proceso que duró casi seis meses, por no decir un poco más. Eh, y que bueno, que fue espléndido, fue una sumatoria, él hacía sus pausas que le venían muy bien para meditar el, el, los temas. Y bueno, cuando ya dio con, con la idea, eh, fue mucho más fluido. So, I think uh, now we are seeing also the images of the book. I am sorry because I had problems <laughs> in sharing. So I was hearing you, but also worried for this. But now we see the book. It's important because okay. so the, the triumvirate and the, the collaboration <laughs> created this wonderful book. I, excuse me for this. And uh, so um, it took some time for the storyboard to be finalized, but we really trusted Juan. We knew his work and we knew it would, uh, the result was, would be really splendid. It took us six months, even a little bit more than six months, and the final result was wonderful. There were enough uh, pauses and breaks for meditation on what the work was going to be. But when, uh, you know, when the final focus on the final idea was achieved, the result was great. Y bueno, quedó esto que estamos muy contentos todos. <laughs> and so we were very happy. Yes, you you have all the reasons to be. The book is amazing and as um, you were all saying like one voice, different voices, they um they are just playing together, they're just singing together and the book has a unique taste like it's really an object you want to have and to to go through the, its pages it's just hearing like different stories from the same voice or maybe you know voices have different shades so um it's really now i'm happy because we can uh, look through the pages and maybe we could have one more reading if you like it that would be uh, for example this iq 14 is uh, Jorge Luis Vargas. And maybe if you like it, uh, we could also go through the end and then maybe read the last one. What do you think, if you like it? Sure. Juan, do you want to read it? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, am the, I am the illustrator. <laughs> You read it, Adolfo. Ok, so you were serious about that. Okay. ¿Es un imperio esa luz que se apaga o una luciérnaga? So in English would be Haiku 14. 
Is it an empire that dying light or a firefly? Suena bien. Beautiful. Beautiful. Man, and of we can go through um, more pages. This is the lighting matches with matches that we were mentioning before. And also the um, Aguiles Nazoa that you were mentioning before, Adolfo. Yes, yes. That, that match, that moment in which you thought. Ex that the and, actually, ah. and actually, when I read it, there were only two lessons. And the title said that there were seven lessons. So in the other place in Spain, I found another two lessons. And finally, Pancha and Araya from Banco de, de Libro en Venezuela they helped me to find the seven lessons. And we decided here to include the four one that we like it the most. I see, this is, yes, th there is, it's a um, very modern style, which this very long title, the constructing mm -hmm. ways, not finding new ways. And it's, for, and it's from 1943, so. 43. And um, yes, it's double spreads and uh, that one you needed to see it like this, like there. Yeah. Ah, yes. In the yes, in the actual book, it's moving. It's beautiful. Yeah. And uh, uh, do you have um, a favorite? Uh, Adolfo, which would be your favorite um, apart from the one that you already mentioned that's a really tough question <laughs> would you like that's to read it. the jorge Lujan? yes that that's one of my favorites i mean every 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 poem but this one i really like because i think it tells tells us tells us something about the moment we are living right now in poetry where anything really anything could happen if we start exploring and experimenting more so la presa. Vi un lobo, pero en realidad, ¿cómo saber si estaba allí? Su aliento azul no provoca menos mareo, mareas que la luna. De sus patas sobre mi pecho no puedo hablar, porque yo aún dormía. Todo lo demás está por suceder. The prey. I saw a wolf, but really, how to know if he was there? His blue breath didn't cost less tides than the moon. Of his paws over my chest, I cannot say a thing since I was still sleeping. Everything else is yet to happen. And Marcella, uh, yes. I want to please just say a little thing that I remember now reading the Jorge Luján poetry that some of these poems mostly of um, were um, published before in other anthologies of um, each poet or ever. So this book gave us the opportunity to work with each poet a new um, and adjust little things. And I remember Jorge Luján especially adjusting like a period, a word of the poem. And it was such a beautiful job because they, even the poets had a, a moment to reread and rewrite their poems again to get them ready for the new journey, right? Yeah, very, very like polished. <laughs> very polished, very detailed. And um, I wonder how this book will um, light other matches going uh, to children. And for example, in school or in families, and it's going to be very powerful. And uh, uh, Pancha, do you already have uh, uh, um, requests for publishing the book in uh, other language, in translation? Well, uh, yes, that's, um, we're working on that because it's very, it's very challenging, I must say. We have a Korean offer, a maybe a translation in English. But it's very challenging because um, there are 36 poets from all over um, Latin America and Spain. So we have to work in each right of each poem with the heritage, the agents, the poems, the ones mm -hmm. that's already died. And also 
I was talking to a publisher um, that's interested um, in doing it in English, and she's saying, with this um, like chorus voices in this um, anthology, I would need 36 translators because mm -hmm. how do I put each voice in another language? Mm -hmm. So I think um, if we finally can do it in other language, it will be so challenging and so beautiful because it's going to be like, um, almost like re-editing the book again. And hopefully eh, we hope that as we have um, in Spanish culture and history, we have um, nurtured from many poets from all over the, the world, like um, from English tradition, Italian tradition. So maybe our Spanish speaking tradition, our language can be also um, translated and nurture other cultures. For sure, it does. I mean, the old book uh, does this, nurture other cultures with the culture of Ibo-American uh, poetry. So uh, it's a great merit. It's a wonderful book. And I have to say, while we were talking, we mentioned uh, many times international boredom books for young people now because of the library in Munich when uh, where Adolfo went and personally I have a wonderful memory of Mexico City uh, being into the anthropological museum with Orge Lujan and that came to my mind and it was another IBBY congress so um, maybe with this idea in mind of uh, books bridging uh, building bridges of uh, peace and of um, multiculturalism, I imagine that maybe they could do the book uh, keeping the Spanish text and maybe adding another text in another language. Maybe that could be also a way to keep the sound of the beautiful uh, Spanish uh, written here. And so we, we look forward for uh, next editions, of course. And um, I think we are we are closing. I don't know if you want to add anything else. Of course, I look forward to meeting you in person uh, next year in uh, Bologna Children's Book Fair. And I congratulate again and thank you very much for being with us today. Stella, thank we you. Are so delighted. Thank you. Really grateful. Thank you, Marcella. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. <laughs> and thank you to the Bologna Book Fair that has always been there for us and has been able to build those bridges all over these years. Thank you very much for mentioning it. I appreciate. We appreciate yeah. a lot. It's a great friendship for us as well. So take care and we wait for you next year in Bologna. Okay, Yay! thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Fabio, ci siamo? Sì. Grazie. Okay. Muchas gracias, uh, Emily. Grazie mille. Thank you for everything. And I apologize if I had this problem in sharing the book. <laughs> Finally, we showed some pages, right? So finally, finally, we did it. Thank you Good very work. much for your one beautiful words and work. Okay, <laughs> take care. All my best. Thank, Thank you, Marce Marcella. Yeah. Marcella. Grazie. Aspetto really... di con Adolfo. Aspetto di conoscerti di persona. Okay. <laughs> yo también. Yo también. <laughs> te espero. Te espero en Bologna. Por favor. Ciao. Ciao. Grazie. Ciao, Marcella. Ciao, grazie, grazie Ciao. Gabriella. Ciao, gra grazie, grazie. Gabriella. Ciao. 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 Ciao.